Greetings, everyone, and a warm welcome back to my little corner of the internet. I'm your host, JD, and in this installment of what new, expensive, and niche random hobby will she pick up next, I'm bringing you bug taxidermy. On butterflies, specifically. And what better month to do so than October? I have been collecting framed butterfly specimens for years now, though buying them like this can get rather pricey in this current economy, so I figured I'd learn to make my own frames and pin my own buggies instead. I ordered a total of 11 butterflies from two Etsy shops, shown on screen here, for this endeavor today. I will be rehydrating, pinning, and framing them all from start to finish. I will also be making the frames, which will consist of some woodworking, some glass cutting, and some spray painting. These little guys arrive in a dried state, and would crumble apart if I attempted to pin them like this. They are very parched and in need of hydration. For rehydrating, I get a large Tupperware and line the bottom with paper towel, dampening it with a spritzer bottle until fairly moisturized. I add my first layer of butterflies and then pad the top of them with another moist paper towel layer before adding the rest and covering them as well. Rehydrating can also be done by injecting the bodies directly with a syringe full of water, but that looked absolutely terrifying and I was not about to attempt that when I saw the other folks just putting them in the little rehydrating Tupperware. I then stick them in the fridge for 48 hours to begin the process and soak. While those guys are percolating, I take the opportunity to create my spreading boards. Using these all-purpose foam sheets, I cut them into many different sections and glue them to each other with PVA glue, a very non-invasive glue and one that won't melt your styrofoam. Elmer's would also work just fine. I leave small gaps just big enough for little itty butterfly bodies to fit comfortably between. Forty-eight hours have passed, and it is time to revive and construct my children. I use entomology pins for this process, but sewing pins should work just fine according to the internet. I also have a pair of blunt end forceps to assist me in this undertaking. This was my first time really ever touching a butterfly in general, so I was terrified, and it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to get to the point where I could spread the wings apart and pierce through the abdomen with a pin. After I had, however, I was ready to pin his little body to the board. It took me many attempts to get the hang of it, but the process is this. Pin the body so that the wings are level and flat when spread. Place small parchment paper squares over top of each side of the wings and pin them in temporary place, never puncturing through the wings themselves. Grabbing the costal vein along the top edge of the forewing, you can pull and adjust the wings with far less fear of breaking anything, as this is where their wings are the strongest. As I mentioned, it took me a long time to get the hang of this, as I was so nervous to touch their wings at all. I found that minimal touching, with very light pressure, is permissible, though the more you handle them with your fingers, and eventually with tools and parchment paper as well, the tiny scales of the wings will flake off and cause the wings and areas around them to look a little messy, like they're producing dust or something. I'm sure you'll see me doing this by accident many times throughout this process. Some of these butterflies were far more sensitive and flaky than the others and their fragility would be my downfall as I kept adjusting them endlessly to soothe my perfectionism. We also took to naming them, as you'll eventually see, this guy was the first to get a name, a Heliconius Doris butterfly. His name is Manila Envelope. Don't ask for justification, I don't have any.
Generally, when pinning, you'll want to place the top wings so that the wing base along the bottom of the forewings is perpendicular to the body, and then pull the bottom wings up to meet the perpendicular line with no gaps between them, but ideally, no overlap as well. We've arrived at the most infuriating part of this pursuit. My blunder, my disappointment, my anti-muse, if you will. The Junonia radama, or the blue buckeye butterfly. Spoiler alert, I completely messed it up. Just destroyed it. So much so that I turned off the camera so that my anger and rage wouldn't be captured on record for generations to come. I tore its wings in several places, and it was not salvageable. But I didn't want to waste the poor guy, so he went into a collection bottle to live on that way instead. Shame. He was the one I was most excited for, too. I will one day have my revenge. So stupid and dumb. So dumb and stupid. There he was, like a shadow of someone in a nuclear blast. Oh look, I broke a small part of this one's wings too. I'm just so good at this! After the wings are pinned in a satisfactory manner, you'll want to keep the body in place by adding two crossing pins just beneath the tail, propping it up so that it doesn't droop as it dries. You will also wish to pin the antennae if possible, gently moving them into position, and honestly, just pinning them the best you can. If you can get them up under the parchment paper, great. If not, just finagle some pins around to hold them up. This one here, the IDA Leucono, or the rice paper butterfly. Yeah, this one here is called shipping container. Yep. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut <laughs> Yep, that one came soon after Manila Envelope. Its booty was popping like it was way up in the air. I didn't know how to bring it down, honestly, so he was just immortalized that way. <laughs> I would like to add, all of these specimens were- It's moody with I would like to add, all of these specimens were ethically collected after the butterflies all lived long and hopefully fulfilling butterfly lives. I do not condone the killing of cute butterflies, or any buggies for that matter, for pinning, seeing as they'll all die of natural causes eventually, and they look just as nice then as they would if you'd gotten them sooner. This big boy, TM, is called Big Z. Yeah, he's a Papilio Gambrisius Colossus, or the forest giant swallowtail butterfly. And yes, he is named after that one penguin in Surf's Up. And finally, here are all 11, uh, 10 now, pinned. They must dry for over 48 hours, same as before to ensure their long-lasting hardening into their final shells of existence. And while that time passes, I will prepare their prisons, uh, frames. I measure each one, both width and length at their widest points, rounding up for safety. Woodwork in time. I didn't do this part. I have no idea how to woodwork. I would have inevitably cut my fingers off. No, <laughs> my camera woman did this for me. Shout out to Grace. Each wood uh, slice was three quarters of an inch thick and cut to have a width of 1.5 inches. From there, they were sawed off at a 45 degree angle according to my measurements, plus 0.5 inches to give them some room to breathe. Quarter inch deep channels were added a quarter inch away from each edge which will eventually account for the glass panels. Three sides were then glued with wood glue, leaving one side unattached for later assembly. They were then spray painted with a two-in-one black primer and paint, and then finished with a lacquer. 
As the caption stated, glass cutting was a slow descent into madness. Or fast, actually. It happened very fast. It did not take long at all for me to grow impatient with this step. You thought the blue buckeye butterfly was bad. Oh no, no, nothing compared to glass cutting for the first time. I picked up a bunch of old frames from the thrift store, which was a killer deal since I got like eight big boys for like two dollars each. The only danger was hoping that all of them were glass and not fiberglass, playing roulette with each cut onto a new sheet hoping it didn't shatter in my face. Could I have used the scraps? Yeah, maybe. Hypothetically, you're supposed to be able to score the glass along a straight edge, and then snap it along that scoring in one fell swoop off a countertop edge or something akin. Hypothetically. It's a good thing I had extra glass. Oh, also, make sure you add on a little more than a quarter inch to each of your measurements to account for the channels that they'll slide into. Here they are in all their glory. After blood, sweat, tears, and a little more blood, since I got enough glass in my knees and feet to be worth mentioning, make sure to wear proper protection, kiddos. Do as I say, not as I do. Each frame would need to be equipped with a hanger, which I found easier to add at this stage before all the glass had been put in and whatnot. I measured each to find the middle, making sure I kept track of which orientation would be facing upwards. Then, using this really nice screwdriver my parents got me for Christmas, screwed in all the baby screws to attach the gold hangers to their parent frames. Now it is time to unpin the butterflies and see the true state that they are in after my mediocre handling of them. First little guy, a little flaky. His wings were a bit sheer in some places, and he was one of the most fragile of the bunch. He is the Retus Periander. His name is Mr. Flaky. This second precious baby is named Eye Guy, the Junonia Orithia butterfly. He had a little bit of wear and tear as well, unfortunately, though it wasn't noticeable unless tilted toward a light source from behind. This handsome little devil is the Precis Clelia, otherwise known by the moniker, just a little guy. The main reason I truly wanted to make my own frames and not just leave it at the pinning was because I could not find shadow boxes with glass panes on both sides anywhere. I can imagine it's due to the nature of closing them off when they're ready. I was dead set on having them this way as well, because I love the backs of the butterflies and even if they face a wall most of the time, I still like to take them down here and there to have a good look and enjoy. Like, look at the back of this one. Ignore the little chip in his wing, but look how pretty his underside is. Uh, yes, he is Mr. Demon, since he was a pain and a half to work with. A Lyopteryx Apollonia. Up next is this precious and adorable little cinnamon bun, who is actually a moth that I snuck among the ranks, since I loved him so much. And his name is Friend Moth, and he's an Eterugia Replita. He was incredibly easy to pin, which is why he's my friend. And just look at the back of him. This one looks like a, ooh. Manila envelope. Why? Because his wings are yellow. His name is Manila envelope. Yeah. And of course, Manila envelope, as mentioned earlier. What you're seeing me do here is the process of mounting the butterflies using a dab of fairly lukewarm hot glue in my closest approximation to the center. I apply it to the interior back pane of glass and then press the butterfly body into it, maintaining their position until the glue has solidified. He wasn't as good as friend moth, but... He wasn't as cooperative. No. I 
Capri Sun. I think it's cute. <laughs> you can name him though. I like Capri Sun. Why is he Capri Sun? Well, look at him. Okay. <laughs> look at him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He looks. He looks like a Capri Sun. Like Pacific Cooler. Yeah. Is that oh, a Capri Oh, that's sun? actually a pretty. That's actually a pretty good name. Though. Pacific Cooler or Capri Sun? No, Pacific Cooler. <laughs> His name is already Capri Sun. Well, like Pacific Cooler is a Capri Sun flavor, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that works. So his name is gonna be Capri Sun, in parentheses, Pacific Cooler. I have to write that on the name tag? Yeah. Yes, as you heard, this fantastical and absolutely astounding little cherub of a child is Capri Sun Pacific Cooler. He is a proud Hamadryas Amphinome butterfly, and as you might have noticed, he's one of the cleanest yet. I don't know, those are the cat of mouth. I'm terrified. Did you open them? Oh yeah, he looks really good. He's actually really cute. Okay, yeah, he's really cute. <sighs> I'm gonna have a heart disease after this. If you have a heart disease from this, what do you think I have from this whole process? The glass cutting, the whole shebang. I don't think you have a stomach anymore for the ulcers of the place. I don't know how obvious it might have been to you, but it became obvious to me that the bigger the butterfly, the easier it is to handle in general. And of course, we come to our next beautiful, scrumptious, little itty bitsy dandy of a guy. This is an Asterope Lapirieri, fittingly named Almost Perfect Blue, since he was a little off center when I finished mounting him. You can name him Almost Perfect Blue. Um, <laughs> that's a good one, yeah, I like it. That is not a Dutch angle. This is a Dutch angle. Dutch angles are at like a slight tilt. There you go, that's a Dutch angle. Already named, the famed, phenomenal, big ol' delight of a presence I've been graced with, this is the one and only shipping container! Why? Look at him. No. Pick a new one. Mm. Um. This one is like bigger manila envelope. <laughs> okay, this one needs more blue. Oh. <laughs> Container. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna grab him after actually. His butt is so high though that I can grab it with my hands. You should just do that to all of them. Give him a little well, I can't, handle. Oh, like it purposefully raised their body? Yeah, they purposefully so raised their butts. So I can give him a little, a little butt handle. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> Oh That's my goodness, it. Jamie? What? What? That's good, right? Well, yeah, it's perfect. Stop messing with it. It's perfect. Don't hurt shipping container. Wait, is his butt going to interact with this? No, his butt's fine. Oh, it doesn't. Yes, I dropped him, but he was just fine. My camera woman is just a baby. And last, but certainly not least, the big mamma jamma come here from absolutely not Alabama. The big man, the myth, the legend, the incredible, stupendulous Big Z. Where is he? Oh, he's pretty. There he is. What was the penguin's name? He's like noticeably fuzzy in the cabin. Yeah? Yes. I don't want to encase him forever, man. Can I touch him? The penguin's name? Uh, is it who was in the penguin movie where they saw uh, Cody? <laughs> yeah. Cody Maverick? <laughs> yeah, Cody Maverick. No, his teacher. Oh, Big Z. Big Z. Oh, that's a good one though. Okay, his name's Big Z. 
Gigantamungo. Well, I thought his name was Gigantamungo or something like that. Or, 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 or no, Big Z. Teratuga or Teratuga. I want to feel his little butt. Yeah, can I feel his little butt? Is he is he safe? Um, I'm holding. I'm him. not handling him. No, I'm so scared. Just touch his butt. Please. Touch his butt. Isn't that weird? He's so cute! I know, he's not cute. After mounting all the butterflies, I wood glued the final sides of the frames, waited 24 hours to be safe, and prepared to hang them with the rest. Part of that preparation was also, of course, adding the labels, which I have cutely written up. And here they are, in all their glory, my new children. I know they aren't all perfect, and they have some flaws to them, and could have perhaps been done far cleaner by somebody else, but something about doing it myself and seeing those leftover flaws brings me more joy than if I'd just bought them pre-framed. Makes my dysfunctional collection more special. If you made it this far, thank you very much for sticking around. Which butterfly was your favorite? Conversely, which butterfly name was your favorite? Eventually, if I get some more and frame some more butterflies, I might take your name suggestions if you got something good. So let me know and keep an eye on my socials for butterfly naming opportunities. You are an absolute gem for being here. I'd just squish you up and eat you whole. Thank you very much and have a good day. <laughs>